title of the message uh, this morning is The Reverend, The Revenant. And um, perhaps maybe if you hear that word revenant, perhaps maybe you think of the movie that uh, came out in 2016, which starred Leonardo DiCaprio. And um, it was a movie where he won his Academy Award. And the movie is an interesting uh, a, a story. While exploring the uncharted wilderness in 1823, frontiersman Hugh Glass, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, sustains life-threatening injuries from a brutal bear attack. And when a member of his hunting team kills his young son and leaves him for dead, Glass must utilize his survival skills to find a way back to civilization. Grief stricken and fueled by vengeance, the legendary fur trapper treks through the snowy terrain to track down the man who betrayed him. Now, when I read this passage of scripture in Hosea, it talked about this grizzly. Of course, it was not talking about a grizzly bear, but a grizzly lion. But I thought about the grizzly bear in this movie. And so um, <clears throat> as I read that passage of scripture, it was not an easy passage of scripture to read. It was a very tough passage and we will be returned to it uh, uh, just briefly. But I looked up the word revenant and the word speaks of one who returns after a lengthy absence, one who returns after death. In the French translation of the word, it speaks of a supernatural being or a ghost. Now we'll come back to that. But last Sunday, I spoke to you about the Israelites, the Israelites who were taken into captivity to Babylon and how they suffered and how they went through all kinds of troubles. They were taken out of their land and taken into Babylon. Many of them were killed and um, Jerusalem was destroyed, the temple was destroyed, the walls were destroyed, and they were all uh, uh, in chaos and, and, and in fear and, and taken into captivity. And they worried. And as you remember, last week we talked about how their captors asked them to sing one of Zion's songs. And, um, and, and they just couldn't. And they said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? They just couldn't find a way of, of singing those beautiful songs from Zion there in Babylon. But let me just tell you how they fell into captivity because it's important for us to understand this fact. Now, as far as this message is concerned, I'm gonna need you to listen very carefully so that you hear what I say to you and the words that I use so that I'm not misinterpreted because it's very important what I'm going to be sharing with you because it has to do with what we're experiencing today with this coronavirus. So I need you to follow with me and to stay with me so that uh, you will not uh, uh, miss something here. I'm going to uh, uh, bring it as clearly as possible so that we can understand. Now, the prophets were speaking to the Israelites about their backsliding, about their idol worship, about their rebellion, and how they were living their lives. And prophets after prophets came to them and spoke to them about them backsliding and the fact that uh, there was an army that was surrounding them, ready to invade them, and they were going to be in trouble. But they didn't believe the message. They didn't believe that the Babylonians would dare come in and take them captive. And so they kept on living the way they were living disregarding the prophets. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah, who is one of those prophets, suffered greatly, greatly by the, his own people who rejected his message. He, day after day, would come and would tell them that, and would warn them that they're going to be invaded. And the Bible tells us in that famous chapter, chapter 29 of Jeremiah, 
he describes to the people what's going to happen. He tells them, hey, you're going to be in captivity. You're going to be taken. It's going to happen whether you believe it or not. What I'm telling you is that once you are in that captivity, don't try to fight your way out of it. But in other words, he said to them, make yourself at home. Live with it. Deal with it. Understand what is happening and don't rebel. And so in verse 10 of Jeremiah 29, he says to them, this is God's word. And, and this, is the, this is the subject. As soon as Babylon's 70 years are up, I will show up. Now, the following verses we're very familiar with, and I'm going to come back to those verses uh, because those, that's the shouting part in this whole sermon. So we'll come back to that. But uh, that's what brings me to the grizzly, to this whole idea that of, of, of a bear. And, 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 and I took it as a bear, a grizzly bear. Now, we're all familiar with uh, a, a, a bear, and we've heard the phrase, a bear hug. Now, let me just say this before I, I, I get into that, and I, I told you that this would be related to the coronavirus. Coronavirus derives their name from the fact that under electronic microscopic examination, each barn is surrounded by a, by a cor corona, which in Spanish means crown or a halo. Coronavirus is a type of common virus that infects humans, typically, typically leading to an upper respiratory infection. Now back to the grizzly bear. We've heard that phrase, a bear hug. Now, in the business world, a bear hug is a company, that a company that is being forced to accept an offer, an offer they can't refuse. And then bear hug, as far as a human, and in wrestling, you see this sometimes in wrestling, where uh, the person will take a, another person and give them a bear hug. And it's described it as a painful move, as much as the pressure is being exerted onto the opponent's sternum. That's the breastbone, often hurting the backbones and muscles, as well as forcing air out of the lungs. Now, let me come back to the passage of scripture. Jeremiah was not the only prophet that was speaking to the people. There was Amos, there was Isaiah. And there was also Hosea. And I'm not going to go too much into the background on the, uh, uh, the person of Hosea, but we know that he was a prophet that was asked to do something that perhaps maybe would be controversial in our thinking. But his message to the people of Israel was that they were backsliding, that they were going back to and worshiping idols rather than worshiping the true God. And so here in chapter 5 of Hosea, I read to you the verse 14, but in verse 13, it reads like this, and I paraphrase. He says, when Jerusalem and Judah were sick, they went running to Assyria. Now, they went running to an enemy to try to get help. But here's what the prophet uh, Jeremiah says uh, speaking uh, God's words, he says, they went to the Syrians for help to the big king, but he can't heal you. He can't cure your oozing sores. Now, and then verse 14, that tough verse where it says, I'm a grizzly, meaning you're not going anywhere until they come to their senses. And when they finally hit rock bottom, maybe, maybe they'll come looking for me, saith the Lord. Now, <clears throat> we are all in quarantine, not just this entire nation, but uh, even the world. 
And um, we had a lot of questions. And we ask ourselves, you know, where is God in all of this? And why are we experiencing what we're experiencing? And, you know, I cannot help but to, to, to think about it and to think of fact that we're experiencing something that the world has never experienced in the history of the world. We've had plagues, we've had pandemics, but nothing like what we have right now. And look at what it has done. It has stopped everything. Everything has been canceled. We couldn't even go to church. The churches are all closed. Uh, um, and so um, we are forced to be in our homes and try to do the best that we can. But here is the thing. What are we doing in our homes? How are we spending this time? What is, the, what is it that God is expecting from us? And let me tell you right now, I love what the scriptures has to say. If we would have just read those verses in chapter five and leave it there, then we're in big trouble. But chapter six, verses one through three, I don't know if we can put that on the screen, if we have it at all, um, but I am going to uh, read that to you because basically that is our shouting part in Hosea chapter six, verse one through three. Listen to, to what God is saying to those who are in captivity, to those who are in bondage, to those who cannot go anywhere, who were taken away from their comfort zone, away from their homes. He says, come on, let's go back to God. He hurt us, but he'll heal us. He hit us hard, but he'll put us right again. In a couple of days, we'll feel better. And by the third day, he'll have made us brand new, alive and on our feet, fit to face him. We're ready now to study God, eager for God knowledge. As sure as the dawn breaks, so sure is his daily arrival. He comes as rain comes in the springtime, refreshing the ground. That is God's promise. And I believe that is God's promise even for us today. So what is it that the Lord is saying? The Lord is saying, come home. The Lord is saying, come back. The Lord is saying, return. And listen to these very important verses because you would hear this passage of scripture read throughout this quarantine, throughout what we're going through many times. But we need to understand its context. Look at what it says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. But we often read just verse 14. But look what verse 13 says. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people. And then he says this. If my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I love that. And if my people will turn, there is that word again, the returning. And so what is it that God is looking for us? He's looking for us to return, to return to him, not to return to the way we, we served them in the past, not to turn to the way we live, but to turn to him 100%, to turn to him and worship him and to live for him. This is this quarantine time a time to go after God and to return to God. It seems to me that God loves that word return. Uh, we all are familiar with the story of the prodigal son. And we know that story pretty well. Father had two sons. 
The younger son says, I can't wait for you to die, dad, so I can get my inheritance. I want my money now. He wanted his money now so he can go and spend it and, and, and do and scrounge uh, 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 the inheritance. And the Bible tells us that he goes out and he spends all his money. Now he's caught up in a famine. He's unemployed and he gets a job in a pigsty feeding the pigs. But as he is there, he realizes and he says to himself, and the matter of fact, as the scripture says, he comes to his senses. And he says, in my father's house, the servants are eating way better than this. I should return. There's that word again. I should return to my father's house. Now, I don't know if he's going to accept me. I don't know what he is going to do. But even if he makes me one of his servants, I want to go back. I want to go back to him. And we know the story very well. Before I get to that shouting part, let me just tell you this. Why did Jesus tell this story? I'll tell you why. Because the Pharisees were accusing him of welcoming sinners. They were accusing him of eating with sinners and welcoming them and being friends of sinners. Now let me get back uh, to the story. As we know, the prodigal son starts heading home. And the Bible says that when he was far off, the father, who must have been standing in front of the porch of his house, in his house, he could see his son from afar. Now, his father doesn't sit there and say, well, here he comes now. He's coming back now. Oh, well, I'm going to teach him a lesson. No, no, no. That's not what the story says. The story says that the father runs. He runs to his son. And could you imagine? Hey, listen, if I was directing the movie, The Prodigal Son, I would focus that camera on that son when he sees his father running towards him. He probably doesn't even know. Is he going to smack me? Is he going to reject me? Is he going to tell me to get lost and not come back? What is he going to do? But he's, he, I would just love to catch you there. But what happens is the father comes and grabs his son. And it, the Bible tells us he begins to kiss his son on the neck. Now, this guy just come from a pigsty. He must have smelled horrible. He must have been, he, 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 you know, just really bad. But here the father is hugging him and kissing him. And then the servants who were chasing the father, because you see, a rich man back in those days never walked. I mean, never ran. They walked. Wherever they were, they never was in a rush because they're too big, they're too rich, they're too, uh, uh, too important to be running. But here, the father runs to the son, tells the servants, put a new robe on him, put some shoes on him, look at his feet, they're dirty, put a turban on his head, put a ring on his finger. My son who was dead is now alive. The Pharisees accused Jesus of welcoming sinners. Well, let me tell you something. They were wrong. Jesus doesn't welcome sinners. He runs after them. God doesn't welcome sinners. He runs after them. He goes out of his way to get them. That is what this story is all about. God chasing us down. He will move heaven and earth to get us, to get us to come back to him. Let me just read this from Mandy Hale. She wrote this and she said, God doesn't take rejection the same way humans do. When he sets his sights on you, he doesn't give up until he wins your affection. People are asking today, where is God? Where is God in all of this? Where is he? Um, where is God in, 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 in this situation that we're living in? Well, let me tell you something. God is right there in your home. God is right there. Let me tell you something. He is in every home. And he is waiting. As he says in the scripture, waiting. 
Have we hit rock bottom? Oh, absolutely. We've all hit rock bottom. However you are uh, uh, suffering this time, we've all hit rock bottom. But his question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to return? Are you going to call on him? Are you going to come to your sense that says, I need God and I need God in my life? And the question is, where is God? It's almost like that bumper sticker that you heard me speak about so many times. I read a bumper sticker in a car and it said, God is far away. But following that, it said, guess who moved? God is far away, but guess who moved? It wasn't God. It is us. Hey, listen, I can see that father on that stoop of the house waiting, 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 waiting every day. God is waiting and he is waiting for us. Do you remember the, the uh, when Jesus got on the boat with his disciples, he said, let's go to the other side. And then a storm breaks out and the boat is ready to sink. And the disciples are all confused. And then they ask, where's Jesus? And when they find him, he is asleep. And they wake him up and they say, Jesus, don't you see that we're perishing? Don't you see that we're going to drown? What are you doing sleeping? Let me tell you something. I can see Jesus looking at them and say, listen, guys, you got this thing all wrong. I didn't come to this earth to die in the Sea of Galilee, but I came to die in a hill called Calvary. And then he gets up and he tells the wind to be quiet and he tells the waves to calm down. And then he looks at them and actually he rebukes them. He says, what's wrong with you guys? Don't you know who's in the boat? Don't you know that God has not left us? He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I like um, a line, you know, God will create a perfect storm in the area where he knows that we're struggling the most. But he is there with us in the storm. A line from the Jewish theologian, Abraham Joshua Herschel, in his spiritual classic called the Sabbath, he said, Sabbaths are our great cathedrals. And boy, do we miss our churches, our synagogues, our cathedrals. We miss them and want to go back. Yes, we do. But I think God is waiting for us. I read a story uh, this week, and I'll close with this. L. Rogers Owens, uh, he tells the, the story that on a Sunday morning, um, his whole family had gotten up to go to church. And his wife and his two kids, they took off and went off to church. But he was still in bed. And um, he just wanted to get a few more Z's and then perhaps maybe skip church for today. And he's in his bed. All of a sudden, he wakes up, it's 9.30, and he says to himself, I think I can get ready quick enough and make it to the church before the service begins. And so he gets up and drives off to the church. And while he's walking into the church, he thinks to himself and he says, wow, I can't believe that I was going to miss church. How could anybody miss church? And he sits in, in the service and enjoys the service. Little did he know that was the last service that he would attend before distance came about and all the churches were closed. Hey, listen, what are you doing in this Sabbath time? What Sabbath, not just Sunday? Hey, every day is the Sabbath now. And how are we spending that? I hope we can return to God. He is waiting for us. Uh, Frank, I don't know if you're with us this morning. There's a good possibility he may not be. Pastor Frank is not with us right now. Okay, Frank is not with us. That's fine. Okay, so let me just uh, pray for you who have been listening to me for the last few minutes. 
perhaps this message is not too easy. And the reason I ask that you would listen carefully because I don't want you to think that God is the one that sent this pandemic to us. No. Hey, listen, we live in a broken world. We live in a world that has rejected God. We live in a nation that has rejected God. But God uses sometimes what is happening because Jesus himself said, in this world, we'll have many troubles. That's what Jesus said. In this world, we'll have many troubles. And God knows these troubles are coming. And sometimes God will use those troubles to get our attention. As I said earlier, he'll move heaven and earth just to win us. He doesn't welcome sin. He runs after them. And he's been chasing you. And he's been after you for the longest time. It's time to come home. It's time to return to the Lord. Let's do that. When this whole thing is over with, what are you going to say about the months that you spent in quarantine? How much time did you spend with the Lord? You can't say you were busy. Anyway, let me pray for you. So if you're listening to this message, whether you're listening it on Facebook or YouTube or in your homes, I want to invite you to open your heart and say, God, I need you. I need you more than ever. I need you in my life. I don't want to live another day without you. And if we never go back into the church, we never go back into the cathedral, I know that you will be with me. You are our cathedral. You are our church. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Help us to develop an intimacy with you. Help us to pray and to read your word like never before. Help us to return back to you. Forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, good morning to God be the glory. I just want to say that um, listening to that message, how God wants us to come back home. It couldn't have been said no clearer. We're going through a pandemic. And um, wow, I've seen so many changes in the last two months. The working of God, be still and know that I am God. Just that alone. The doors have been marked. Some of us have gotten sick. But God has a hand on you. He'll see you through. We have to be more faithful, more trustful, more warning of God's word and his ways. So everything has stopped. It gives you a chance, like Pastor Irvin said, to reevaluate yourselves and where you stand in your faith and your trust in God. And I just hope and continue to pray that each one of you all that's out there listening right now, that your house and your home, your friends and your associates be covered. And may God always be with you, beloved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Darrell. And it's so good to hear your voice. Amen. God bless you and pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your presence not only here, but in all the homes and any place that we may find ourselves in. I pray, oh God, that we will be more than hearers of your words and be doers. Help us to live for you. Help us, Lord God, to go after you, to build this intimacy with you and serve you. We pray for those who are, are having uh, technical difficulties and coming on or some are seeing and not hearing some are hearing and not seeing we pray oh god for them that you would minister to them oh god and we pray for our facebook and youtube audience that you would help us and draw us closer to you in jesus name we pray amen, amen. and amen see you next week love you guys bye bye guys